Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the Arlington Weekly News. I'm Craig Nolan. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Daniel Pineda. My name's Adele Quo. And here we go with another show, our post St. Patty's Day show yeah. <laughs> and uh, our Cherry Blossom show for 2016. Hope you're having a uh, safe and enjoyable uh, Easter week. Yes. 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 Yeah. And uh, maybe you had a chance to get down there and look at the cherry blossoms. They're out. They're here. They're, they're, peak, they're peak, peak day. Right? They're yeah, peak day, out. yeah. And so are the tourists. So I hope you're enjoying that. And uh, here we go. We have uh, our usual stuff here. Our news and community bulletin board. And Adele is here with... It's Ed Easy Being Green. green. Friend Joe Tree Frog down He's there. He's just chilling there. We actually hey, had Joe. some ears for Joe Tree Frog tonight, but they didn't fit him, so he's going to have to go for fitting. Yes. And get his. Get his he gets all the attention. Get his uh, ears fitted. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, a uh, an everyday Arlington segment uh, mm -hmm. shot by our very own uh, cameraman Hef back there behind hey, the camera. Hef. Camera number. What is that? Number three? Number one. Number three? I can never remember. Number three. Thank you, Hep. Our news for seniors. And then uh, Inga and Nort. That's our show. But before we go, a social media reminder. That's right, Craig. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News. And the number one. Also, facebook.com slash Arlington Weekly News. Craig. Right. Gracias, Senor Pineda. Here we go with the first of our news items. Well, Arlington County recently decided to sell long-term voter-approved bonds. The money will pay for major capital uh, improvement projects like paving, public school projects, critical systems infrastructure, and neighborhood conservation. The 2016 General Obligation, or GO, Public Improvement and Refunding Bonds, may also refund up to uh, $210 million previously issued bonds for debt service savings. The bonds uh, will probably be sold around April 20th. The sales underwriters are Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, PNC Capital Markets, and Citigroup. Daniel. Well, Craig, a new gun store is slated to open in Arlington's Lion Park neighborhood. And according to their website, it will be one of the Beltway's largest sporting arms dealers. The gun store's pending arrival also brings controversy. Some residents in the area are concerned about the types of weapons that may be available there, especially if they include machine guns. The store owner, Dennis Pratt, is threatening to sue members of the General Assembly. Others don't like the idea of any guns in a residential area. Other Lion Park neighbors are happy to have the store in town. They would rather have a store in Arlington than drive to Chantilly to purchase guns. Mm -hmm. Craig. Who would have thunk at a gun store in Arlington? Also in our news items, well, a local teacher is getting a somewhat cool reception, but in a different way. Washington Lee High School physics teacher Kate Miller will join a scientific expedition to the South Pole at the end of this year. Ms. Miller and her K-12 teachers will visit the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory in Antarctica. Their mission will be to study high-energy neutrinos. The National Science Foundation is sponsoring this uh, expedition, and ARCUS, the Arctic Research Consortium of the U.S., will be the manager. Sounds like interesting stuff. Daniel. And Craig, if you've noticed some of your things go missing after a tow truck hauled your car away, then it might be because of this guy. A tow truck worker was just arrested for stealing from cars. 35-year-old Philip Pierce has been charged with grand larceny by Arlington police. He worked with Advanced Towing, a company with a history of complaints, according to NBC Washington. In addition to thefts, they've been accused of predatory business practices and damaging vehicles. The police want to remind drivers to never leave valuable objects in their cars. All right, good advice. Thank you, Daniel. And we'll be back with our CBB Community Bulletin Board file right after we hear from Adele Quo and... It's, it's easy being green. Here's Adele. Hey, well, thanks, guys, and welcome, Arlington, to It's Easy Being Green. I'm here with Joe Tree Frog to celebrate Virginia native plants this week. I want, I remember last week I joyfully announced the um, Native Virginia Plant Society selected the Downey Rattlesnake Plantain. Uh, this was the Virginia Wildflower of the Year for 2016. 
Every year since 1989, VNPS chooses a new wildflower of the year, which must be a plant native to Virginia that should stimulate public interest. Native flora and fauna create an intricate web of life. For example, native bees need native flowers and people need native bees. Plants and animals that have evolved together depend upon each other for survival. But our native plants, a vital part of the web of life, are being destroyed and lost at an alarming rate by our built environment and crowded out by planted landscapes of exotic invasives. Gardeners, you can make a difference in the ecological sustainability of our region by planting native plants. With spring peeking around the hedges and homeowners getting ready to put new plants in your gardens, current and past Virginia wildflowers of the year should be used more in our design landscapes and many deserve a place in your garden. So check out the past winners at the VNPS website. You can find the list of Wildflowers of the Year winners up to spring 2016. If you're ready to buy native plants, check out the upcoming spring 2016 native plant sales also on the VNPS website. You can bring your list of wildflowers to these native plant sales. And another recess resource when shopping for native plants is this guide, the Native Plants for Northern Virginia. This colorful guide highlights the many beautiful, resilient, and beneficial plants native to Northern Virginia. Our native plants that have appealing foliage, berries, and flowers will make your landscape unique, attractive, and welcoming, not only for people, but also for our local wildlife. Because native plants are naturally adapted to our local soils and climate, they are relatively easy to maintain when given the appropriate growing conditions. You can buy this guide on the VNPS website or download it for free. It's, and remember, it's Easy Being Green, celebrating our Virginia native plants. The Downy, the Downy Rattlesnake Plantain. Isn't that a fun name? Wow, yeah. that's quite, I don't know if Downy. I ever would have recognized one if it hadn't been for you. <laughs> and so it's on, also a very cool the plant. The plant of the year, right? The, that's right. The native, wildflower of the, the year. Native wildflower of the year. That's From Virginia. Good. I'll, I'll be on the lookout. So many great props, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, Adele. Thank you, Adele. Okay, as promised now, our CBB Community Bulletin Board file. Here we go. Arlington's Build Your Own <laughs> Workshop Series will kick off, rather, this spring with Build Your Own Rain Barrel. Instructors will show you how to collect, store, and utilize rainwater runoff from your roof. All your plants will be happier and uh, they get a chance to get uh, non-chlorinated water for free and you'll save energy and money that would have been spent on paying your water bill. That's the savings right there. That's a plus. The workshop will be held April 2nd from 1030 till noon at Walter Reed Community Center. They're located at 2909 South 16th Street. Uh, you can visit their website, which should be on your screen there, uh, environment.arlingtonva.us, uh, and then click on stormwater and then rain barrels. Classes uh, cost $55, so you have to pay a little bit for this one, but uh, that's a good deal. Daniel. And Craig, if you miss the rain barrel workshop in Arlington, there are others you can attend throughout Virginia. They are also $55 each. Saturday, April the 16th, there will be one at Green Acres Court, which is located at 4401 Sideburn Road, Fairfax, from 10 a.m. to noon. Then on Saturday, May the 7th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. at 2900 Business Center Drive in Alexandria. And then on Saturday, May the 14th, from 1030 a.m. to 1230 in the afternoon at the Walker Nature Center, which is located at 11450 Glade Drive in Reston. Visit the county website or Nova Soil and Water Conservation District websites for more information. Craig. All right, Daniel. And speaking of rain barrels, well, if you'd rather uh, not build a rain barrel, you can buy one. Uh, unfortunately, they're not for sale uh, in Arlington, but there are distribution centers in other parts of Virginia. Rain barrels are, uh, they cost $65 a piece. Uh, they'll be uh, for sale at the Fred Packard Center in Annandale. That's coming up Friday, April 29, from 9 to 4. And then Saturday, April 30th, from 9 to 12 noon. And then Saturday, June 4, in Falls Church. You can also visit the website uh, on your screen. 
uh, to get more information about environment.arlingtonva.us and to get more information on rain barrels. Daniel. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we have to introduce every day in Arlington. Uh, and we'll be back with news for, news for seniors right after we look at uh, this little video clip here. Hello again, this is Hef Munson. I'm doing another one of those things for Everyday Arlington. And where I am standing right now is my little secret. Oh, all right. I'm in Glen Carlin Park. I am now, anyway. Actually, my voice is in post-production, which is why I suddenly sound calmer and somewhat more posh. In the late 19th century, this area was owned by the Carlin family. The land included two old springs of fresh water, which became known as the Carlin Springs. In the early 1870s, the railroad built a station on the Carlin Springs property, and, around the same time, John Carlin decided to create an excursion and vacation resort. He bricked in the springs and built a large ice cream and restaurant pavilion, as well as a dance pavilion. Carlin Springs remained a popular resort for about a dozen years. In 1887, Carlin Springs was sold. The Carlin Springs Resort buildings were demolished in 1893, and the name of the village was changed to Glen Carlin in 1896. So it goes. The park land was finally acquired by Arlington County in 1942. Glen Carlin Park has some pretty neat playgrounds. They seem to be fairly recent. However, I remember one feature from the 1960s that is no longer around. High up the hill, on the other side of where the railroad tracks used to be, there were, at one time, a couple of small caves. They were modest little caves, side by side. They didn't seem to be terribly deep, but I never found out for sure because I never went inside. Still, they were there. I can't seem to find them any more. I suppose that some responsible adults decided that they were a dangerous temptation and somehow had them removed. They were right, of course, because otherwise I'd be in there right now. At least one original Carlin Spring is still there. You can find it by following the WNOD trail south from Arlington Boulevard, then veering right onto the Four Mile Run Trail. Shortly thereafter, turn left onto a dirt path. The path leads to a small shelter with a bench, and then to a small bridge. Cross the bridge and continue perhaps twenty feet more, then look to your right. Prepare to be a bit disappointed. Drinking from the spring is now officially discouraged, but don't worry, you won't be tempted. Still, it's fun to find. Glen Carlin Park is well worth a visit, and it's yet another part of everyday Arlington. Okay. All right, and thanks to our uh, very own Hef Munson there yeah. behind camera three for uh, presenting us great with uh, a look around Arlington and a couple of the parks in Arlington. Nice job. Thanks, Some Hef. Some great vi Appreciate spaces. it. Yeah. Our green spaces in Arlington, and there's lots of them. They're all Some over Arlington. Some great visuals there, And they're Craig. greening up this time of year. It's a great, great time to be out in the parks. Right. Um, Finally, springtime. Especially if you have, well, you have to have your allergy meds with you, I guess. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Tree pollen is the number one culprit these days. But, especially uh, here. Thanks, Hef. Okay, now as promised, here we go with our News for Seniors segment. News for Seniors glasses in place. Are you mm -hmm. unsteady on your feet and uh, maybe get dizzy at times? Well, a physical therapist from Daystar Home Care will discuss the importance of balance, uh, risk of falls, and how to prevent some common types of falls in your home and how to make your home safe. That's coming up Monday, March 28, 1 to 5, I'm sorry, 1 to 2 in the afternoon at Culpeper Garden Senior Center. For more information, give them a call. The number should be on your screen there, 703-228-4403. Daniel. 
Well, Craig, come listen to our latest band playing Roots and Rhythm and Blues. It's a perfect way to start the week. This group meets the second and fourth Monday of the month. Their next performance is on Monday, 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. For more information, call Lee Senior Center. That's at 703-228-0555. Lee Senior Center, home of the rocking chairs, I think. I don't know if they're still playing out there or not, but uh, they might be. All right, also on our News for Seniors file here, well, having a safe environment in your home is important, especially for seniors. 85% of seniors have not evaluated their homes for potential hazards or considered retrofitting their home to accommodate them as they age. You can join Home Instead staff as they reveal potential life-threatening hazards that can be found in homes and easy steps that you can take to create a safe home environment. That's coming up Tuesday, March 29 from 11 till noon at Langston Brown Senior Center. For more information, uh, to give, give them a call. Their number should be on your screen there, 703-228-6300. Daniel. Well, Craig, we need sugar for energy and to stay alive, but too much sugar can create serious problems. You can get all the sugar you need to provide you with essential energy and help you keep your blood sugar in balance with healthy and tasty fruits and veggies. Learn effective ways to help prevent sugar imbalance and diabetes with good nutrition. Explore fresh new recipes and techniques with Virginia Cooperative Extension Nutrition Experts. That's on Wednesday, March the 30th, 11 a.m. to noon. Give them a call. That's Arlington Mill Senior Center. That's at 703-228-7369. And as always, we want to thank our own Judy Masomni. Thank you Judy. so much, Judy, for all your hard work. Appreciate it. Okay, and uh, we'll be back with uh, a sign-off and a quick bye-bye right after we hear from Inga. Is it Inga? It is Inga. Middleton. Inga Middleton and Nort. Here we go. Hi, I'm Inga Middleton, and welcome to this edition of The Sustainable Scoop. Part of maintaining a healthy life is keeping your brain healthy. And here to talk about the brain today is Nort Beckerman, an author of The User's Guide to a Healthy Brain. Nort, Hi, welcome. it's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us what, what else you've done besides writing this wonderful book on the brain. Well, I wrote the book, A User's Guide to a Healthy Brain. Uh, I did a TEDx talk called The Resilient Brain and Me. I teach for Encore Learning at George Mason University on brain health. I put on presentations for the county on brain health. And I have a website, ybhc.info, which is an informational website on how to keep your brain healthy. Uh, I do all those things. Yeah, that's a lot, Nort. Why do you do all this? Well, I had my own problems, and I had it. I had it at a time when getting all this information about the brain was really very difficult. And I felt that all the studying that I have been doing since about 2002, 2003, people shouldn't have to go through what I went through to learn about their brain and how their brain functions. So I have been trying to help people understand brain health. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been, known, it's been known for the last 20 years that aging does not cause cognitive decline. The health of your brain causes cognitive decline. And it's the, the, your brain health starts when you're young. Mm -hmm. And it continues on. And the reason that, we don't, that we've considered aging as a cause of cognitive decline is simply because people have taken their brain for granted. They go through life with a brain that gets less and less healthy. And so as they, when they get older, they experience cognitive decline. But it has nothing to do with aging. It has more to do with the health of their brain and how they've been able to maintain that health throughout the years. So how do we maintain the health of our brains as we age? Well, I, I think there, there's two things you have to start with. And, and, and the first thing is you have to start with learning. You have to continue learning. Crossword puzzles and Sudoku and mind numbers aren't going to cut it. And when you learn, you, and you have to be physically active. Those are the two key factors. Being physically active generates a, a hormone that's necessary for the production of experience-dependent brain cells, which is necessary 
for learning, okay? Uh, so the first two things you have to do is you, you, you have to be physically active and you have to learn. Right. Uh, hydration is incredibly important. In my classes, if people get nothing more from my classes, then they have to make sure that they're hydrated. And hydration doesn't just come from drinking water. Hydration comes from foods that you eat. So we really do have more control over the health of our brain than we ever thought. Oh, certainly. And what yeah. really frustrates me is that, is that more of the, of the scientific community, more of the medical community, doesn't participate in educating the general public. It just, it just disturbs me. So your passion and your motive in life is to do exactly that, educate the public? Yeah, provide as much knowledge to the public about how their brain functions and what they, knew, what they need to do to rebuild a healthy brain. Your brain is very resilient. And so if we have questions about the brain, um, I understand you have a website that we can go to? Yes, they can go to my website, which is YB, uh, ybhc.info. Okay, ybhc.info. And they can just, they can ask a question and leave a message for me and that'll be fine. So you, you can answer any question that anybody has. They can type in their question into the computer and you will respond to them. I'll respond to them, and if I don't know the answer to their question, I'll research it and try to give them a good answer. But you have to understand that I am not an MD, so right. I'm not going to respond in, a medical, in a medical terms. Right. Okay. Well, that is so nice of you to impart your knowledge of the brain on everybody, and I really appreciate you coming, Nord. Well, thank you for the interview. Of I course. appreciate being here. All right. Well, that, that is the Sustainable Scoop. My name is Inga Middleton, and back to the news desk. All right, thanks, Inga and Nort, our very own Nort Beckerman. Thank you, Nort. And Inga Middleton, mm -hmm. and uh, we may be seeing more of uh, Inga and Nort. Well, that'd be good. On our show here. Well, that's about a wrap for this uh, post uh, St. Patrick's Day uh, cherry Pre blossom Easter. edition. Pre Easter. Pre Easter, yeah, that's right. This is Easter week. Everyone's getting oh, ready I almost for forgot it, yeah. about that. Oh, this goodness. is Easter week, right. and it's a busy cherry weekend. blossom week. It is a busy weekend. <laughs> nice weather. So, I hope you have a safe and happy uh, Easter and uh, Passover celebration with your family. Anything else to enjoy the weather? Before we go? The weather is great be time to start for looking for here. those uh, wildflowers that I keep talking about. Yeah, they're out. Right. They're blooming. They are. They're coming out. So if you'd like to see wildflowers, take a trip down to uh, Windy Run. It's yeah. a great river trail. The Potomac Heritage Trail down along the river. Wonderful. Great spot. But don't dig them up. <laughs> no, don't. Dig Just them. look at them. Take pictures. You can take <laughs> Appreciate pictures. them. That's it. Well. Um, we got to roll along here, so thanks for watching. We uh, appreciate your patronage out there, and uh, if you join us next week, we'll be here and do it all again. Have a safe week. Happy Easter. Take care. Happy Bye -bye. Easter. Happy Easter.